Is the Pac-12 going to stick together in its current form long enough for them to complete this deal? On the Marshan and Oran podcast on Wednesday, the guys only spent a couple of minutes on the Pac-12, but man, uh, what John Oran from the Sports Business Journal said at the end was incredibly juicy. He said, we saw how Apple dealt with MLS. That's a laborious process that takes months. The Pac-12, they really do have months. If all the colleges stick there, they have months to figure this out. The big question is, and what we're both sensing, is that there could be one that leaves. And once one leaves, all hell breaks loose. Now, rumors started flying on Thursday night that Utah is the team that is set to leave. Then it circulated on social media that Tracy Pearson, who covers UCLA, stated that Utah is headed to the Big 12. Now, other people uh, were hearing it, too. Other people have been talking about it. Pearson mentioned uh, there's talk about Colorado being a part of that, but Arizona State could be the partner that makes the Big 12 move with Utah. Now, if the Pac-12 deal that is brought to the universities is a streaming deal, or at least majority streaming deal, this would make absolute sense why some schools would want out, right? Utah has invested significantly into their football program, and it has paid off in a big, big way. Uh, from 1995 to 2005, after Urban Meyer took them to an undefeated season, etc., enrollment grew 7% from 29,012 students, or excuse me, grew 7% to 29,012 students. But if you look back from 2005 to 2021, which included a move from the Mountain West to the Pac-12, enrollment increased to 34,424. Uh, it increased to 34,424 students. That's nearly 19% growth. And enrollment of first-time freshmen was 5,361. It was the first time they ever had had over 5,000 fresh. Football helped pave the way for that. Now, if the school's football games are not visible, what happens to enrollment? Like, football is the front porch for a ton of universities. You could say the same thing about the University of Alabama. Student enrollment at Alabama climbed from 25,580 in 2007, the year that Saban was announced as the Crimson Tide's uh, football coach, to more than 38,500 in just 10 years. That's over 50% growth from 2007 to 2017. So let, let's look at the potential partners. First, uh, Arizona State, they were one of the first ones that was rumored to be really irritated with Klyovkov and the fact that a deal had not been done yet. So it would make sense that, you know, they would be willing to split. Uh, they just brought in a new coach, right? Would they be willing to break apart from Arizona? I mean, we've seen it with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, Texas, Texas A&M, etc. Like, a lot of rivalries have been split up due to realignment. Uh, but, I, I mean, I am skeptical of it, obviously. Like, Pitt and West Virginia, one plays in the ACC and the other plays in the Big 12. Is what it is. Uh, they're not in state. Uh, Colorado left the Big 12 for the Pac-12 partially due to the Texas situation back in 2011. They joined the Pac-12 in 2012, and part of that was due to the academic prowess of the Pac-12. But this version of that conference looks a whole lot different without USC and UCLA. Enrollment at, at CU has grown from 29,278 in 2012 that's their first year in the Pac-12, to 36122 this year. The research dollars have gone up exponentially. A lot of that has been because of the company they keep in the comp, but Colorado has decided to invest heavily in football. The truth of the matter is you you do not bring in Deion Sanders if the football team uh, can only be seen through a streaming server, right? Like Regardless of the payout you may get Apple or Amazon or whatever, you want to to make sure that your football program with primetime Neon Dion is seen on TV. Not to mention that Colorado has seemingly lacks their transfer and admittance regulations, and so the football team can be competitive again. Like, they've got to change things up with the transfer portal. Like, in my opinion, this would be the most likely option. I know that the AD has said that Colorado's not leaving, but Utah and Colorado do appear to be the most invested in football right now. While it may be weird uh, to see a school go back to a conference that's already left in the past, it's not unprecedented. I mean, we watched UConn basketball rejoin the Big East. They left back in 2013. They just rejoined in 2020. Like, sometimes the grass isn't always greener, I, I, I suppose. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, I guess it's possible that Utah does just leave by themselves. Like, the Holy War, BYU and Utah, uh, that would be a conference game. That would definitely be. And it would be another team in the mountain time zone that, you know, the Big 12 uh, is really trying to push out west, right? If schools are going to leave the Pac-12, it would appear... That's likely going to happen sometime in the next six weeks. I, I would imagine that we are going to see something relatively soon on all of that. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.